Hey guys, welcome back. It looks like CGC is now going to be creating 11 additional games for the collectors of such that are really integrating. Probably be pretty excited. I'm not sure exactly how many other companies grade these titles, but it's interesting that there is now another option. Again, I don't grade cards. I don't see the, the value in it, at least for me. Um, I do understand that some people want to resell. Some people just really want to have a card graded. Uh, personally, I value my own opinion on the condition of a card more than sending it into somebody random. But that's on you. However you want to enjoy it. Um, with these games, with grading, uh, with any company basically other than PSA, just know going in that you're probably not going to add any additional value or you might add temporary value until things clear up uh, this trading card bonanza sort of goes back to normal uh, or at least calms down uh, and the services I guess both the the printing end the supply end the grading end everything kind of regulates itself and goes back to a state where you aren't waiting a year to get cards back you aren't paying extra fees because they can't handle the load uh, and maybe this is a sign of that. Hard to say. Uh, maybe CGC has now seen a uh, a little bit of a lapse in the cards being submitted uh, that they were grading previously. And now they can expand into some other stuff uh, to fill out their portfolio. I'm sure this was coming regardless. I don't know if it was delayed or not. Hard to say. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if it was. But uh, let's get into the article here. And uh, hopefully you're... If you're into grading, if you're into CGC, uh, your title or your TCG is included in this list. So here we go. CGC Trading Cards expands grading services to include Dragon Ball Super, Flesh and Blood, MetaZoo, and more. So a lot of the currently new and popular games and, uh, and cards that we've seen. Collectors asked, and CGC Trading Cards answered with 11 new games. CGC Trading Cards is excited to announce the expansion of its expert authentication, grading, and encapsulation services to include cards from many more of the most popular trading card games. Here is a list of trading cards that CGC Trading Cards is now accepting in addition to Pokemon and Magic, the Gathering Cards. So, pretty good start uh, with the two big ones. Uh, and just keep in mind, those are the two big ones. Magic hasn't really seen a boom uh, in the Cove times that we're in, but Pokemon and Magic are sort of the untouchable gods. Maybe someday that changes, but I can't see it happening anytime soon. Um, so in terms of authenticity, a lot of these cards, especially the, the non-popular ones, even Pokemon cards, you're not going to see very many fakes, at least believable fakes. So authenticating it, short of it being some kind of special edition promo plus doesn't mean a whole lot new games accepted by cgc trading cards digimon issued by bandai digimon has a history dating back to 1997 when digimon virtual pets were introduced as an attempt to provide a more masculine version of the wildly popular tamagotchi toy <clears throat> while cards were issued in the late 1990s to complement the digimon anime and video game the current line of Digimon cards appeared in Japan in 2020. The English versions of the cards, which were released in January 2021, including among its top cards, Omnimon BT1-8084, Alternate Art WarGreymon, which has which was a promo card released at an event in June 2021, and Greymon, also a promo released in June 2021. So it's weird. When Digimon was coming out, it might have been at the absolute peak of TCG craziness. Um, I think these are cool. I don't think it's necessarily going to be a good thing long term for value. But if you like them, collect them. Uh, if I had more time and resources, I'd probably get into uh, the Digimon cards. I think they're really cool. The, uh, the new, new Digimon and the old ones as well would be uh, certainly fun to collect. It's weird. I yeah, it's gone silent. I haven't heard or seen anything recently about Digimon, but uh, if that's your thing, by all means, go to town. Uh, there's a couple like Metabots cards 
that I have a collection. I, I would love to see a new Metabots come out, new Metabots TCG, and I would certainly buy them. Uh, that might be the exception where I'm trying not to branch off into too many things. I already have too much to collect with the, uh, the Pokemon cards, English Pokemon cards. Dragon Ball Super. So Dragon Ball Super, which features characters from one of the most successful manga and anime series of all time, was first introduced by Bandai in 2008 and then relaunched in July 2017. The relaunch introduced a new new game dynamics that mimic the fight dynamics from the Dragon Ball animated series and features card art inspired by both computer-generated and anime illustrations. Secret Rare Son Goku, The Awakened Power, and Secret Rare Son Goku and Vegeta, Apex of Power, are among the most sought-after cards. So I guess that's one thing with... I haven't seen a whole lot of Dragon Ball Super either recently, but um, I'm sure there's people that love them, and there's a lot of chase cards that are probably uh, probably have some value to them. So interesting enough, um, I don't think I've ever seen anyone play either game, if that's an indicator of why it's not in the top tier uh, with your with your Magic the Gathering and Pokemon. Final Fantasy. Oh, I haven't seen that in forever either. Uh, didn't they discontinue that? Final Fantasy is based on one of the best-selling video game franchises of all time. Final Fantasy cards were released originally by Square Enix and Hobby Japan in 2011 in Japan, then discontinued and relaunched worldwide in 2016. The most valuable Final Fantasy card is Cloud of Darkness, Onion Knight A002, which was distributed as part of an event promo packet and unknowingly discarded by most recipients. In the world of fan Final Fantasy, it is considered the equivalent of Alpha Black Lotus from Magic the Gathering or Pikachu Illustrator from Pokemon. How many how many copies were there? I might have to look into that later. Um, also, cool. Uh, Final Fantasy, I don't know. I was never a super, super duper fan of Final Fantasy. They were good, uh, and I played some of the games, not all of them. If they somehow did a crossover with Chrono Trigger, or more appropriately, Chrono Cross, I would be all over it. Uh, and if it was like a special subset or whatever, then I'd have to, I'd have no choice but to purchase them. We have Fire Emblem Cypher. I think that's also discontinued or finished or whatever you want to call it. Printed from June 2015 through October 2020, Fire Emblem Cypher was developed by Intelligent Systems to complement their Fire Emblem video game series. The games... The game includes several tiers of rarity from SR or Super Rare to SR Plus, which feature alternate art, to R Plus X, which often are preview prints. One of the game's most sought after cards is Corrin Female Kingdom of Valasign Fates. Sorry if I pronounced any of that wrong. <laughs> Fans of the Super Smash Bros. video game will recognize cards featuring Marth and Roy, two Fire Emblem characters who are part of the Smash Bros. roster. I think I would really like the Fire Emblem series. Um, of games uh, and the cards look awesome uh, i think this is more of a uh, tempting me to get into other tcgs article than it is grading but to each their own next up flesh and blood super popular super new flesh and blood was released in october 2019 by new zealand's legendary story studios after seven years in development the cards have a unique release strategy which includes limited first edition cards aimed at card collectors and unlimited edition cards aimed at those who are more focused on playing the game. Pretty standard. High demand for the limited edition cards, which are printed in short supply, has led to top cards demanding top prices. Side after cards include many of the set's cold foil singles, such as Heart of Findel, Springs Tunic, and Corsham. Crossroads of Elements. So, I don't know. I don't... I don't mind Flesh and Blood in, in terms of like the aesthetics. I've never played the game. Uh, apparently the game is decent. Um, so what we see here is a little bit of a Magic the Gathering clone. I think the developers had something to do with uh, They used to play Magic and they wanted it to be more like old Magic. So I think that's the premise. So again, if you can't uh, beat them, join them, I guess, in this case. Uh, magic clone sort of, but different. I don't know. It's hard to say. I think this will be like a tier two, tier three um, going forward. I don't, I really don't think it can ever actually take over the original, uh, no matter what uh, 
Wizards of the Coast do with Magic the Gathering. Uh, I think they need to uh, rethink their strategies currently. Uh, it's an absolute mess of different rarities and products that is confusing for um, anyone that isn't the hardest of hardcore Magic the Gathering people. Uh, just dial it, dial it back a little bit, Hasbro. Here we have Force of Will. Uh, I was uh, very close to collecting Force of Will and decided to go with Zillions of Enemy X instead of Force of Will. Um, both beautiful artwork. I don't know if this is necessarily the best selection of artwork. It is nice, but uh, not what I think of when I look at Force of Will cards. All right. Uh, Force of Will was ranked as one of the top trading card games in the world soon after its North American release in February 2015, following behind the traditional top three Magic the Gathering Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! Right? Don't forget Yu-Gi-Oh! I think Yu-Gi-Oh! is probably like a tier two, and then maybe everything else falls into tier three, like your, your Force of Will, uh, which probably even fell out of tier three, I would say. Released in Japan in 2012, the game borrows the bulk of its play mechanics from Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh! So much that it was the target of a lawsuit filed by Magic creator Wizards of the Coast for similarities. The most sought after Force of Will cards typically are the Uber Rares. That's interesting. I wonder if there's if there was anything um, similar with the Flesh and Blood. But I, it's hard to say if it's... If it's inspired by a game, dude, can you really file a lawsuit? Can you really? Anyway, uh, typically the Uber Airs, which utilize a monotone color scheme in their design. The most valuable cards include Lumia, the Faded Rebirth Lumia, Saint of the Crimson Lotus Uber Rare from the Legacy Lost Set, and Ayu Lunar Swordswoman Uber Rare from the Advent of the Demon King Set. So, for those of you that don't know, there was sort of a following it falling out uh with force of will where they overprinted uh there were some boxes that were like twenty dollars for a booster box at one point i don't know what they are now hopefully more than that uh, for their sake but uh a lot of game stores and stuff got uh shafted pretty hard and uh i think just in general the value of the cards didn't retain itself because they printed way too much so maybe they got a little bit uh overzealous and uh and went ham and seems they've been kind of crawling their way back up into the the tier three uh and i'd probably even consider them that at this point so they claim they learn from their mistakes not gonna do it again um also i think there were some some uh power creep issues that people were upset about but all right harry potter i think i know a few people that collect these uh, the Harry Potter Trading Guard game was created by Wizards of the Coast in August 2001 and issued at the same time as the first Harry Potter film release. A base set and four expansions were released, the last being issued on October 2002. Mirror Holofoil cards are fan favorites with top cards including any of those featuring Harry Potter as well as the Dobby's Disappearance card and the Unicorn, Unicorn card. So, um, for anyone that wasn't around in the... Uh, late 90s early 2000s everything and its dog had a trading card almost seems a little bit like that uh these days getting back into that a little bit uh, with stuff pushing in here we go metazoo again disclaimer if you like metazoo by all means go to town collect it just don't be too sad if it doesn't uh, give you the stonker gains 420 that you think it's going to that's my only gripe with it is that people are treating it too much as an investment vehicle and not just as something that they like typically when that happens aka beanie babies or anything like that if the if the premise of the item is that it's going to go up in price and not there's no actual interest outside of that or very little interest outside of that then you run into a beanie baby scenario where you end up with a bunch of little animals filled with beans and that's about it so launched in march 2021 metazoo claims the distinction of being the only collectible card game where your surrounding matters its unique gameplay breaks the fourth wall allowing players surroundings such as forests or bodies of water to empower special abilities on their cards the central cards feature cryptids which are animals like bigfoot and the jersey devil that have been claimed to exist but whose actual existence have never been proven 
Michael Waddell created the game and co-founded it with the help of globally acclaimed DJ and pop culture enthusiast Steve Aoki. Top cards in the set include Mothman, Jersey Devil, and Chaos Crystal. So, in my eyes, Pokemon clone, 25 years too late. That's about it. And all, I, th it, there's just so many gimmicks with... Oh, it's got a Kickstarter stamp. It's got a first edition stamp. Uh, it's printed upside down on purpose. Limited this, limited that. Super expensive. Stonk to the moon. This is 2021 in a nutshell. Be careful. If you enjoy it, go to town. Um, do what you want with it. But in my eyes, not a good uh, investment. And it's, it seems like people are treating it as mostly that. All right. My Hero Academia. My Hero Academia was issued by Jesco Games in 2021 and features characters from the My Hero Academia manga, first published in 2014. The game is compatible with Jesco's Universus system, which means the cards can be mixed with those from the company's other card games, including Mortal Kombat and Cowboy Bebop, to create blended decks. Uh, top card in the set is One for All, Full Cowling, 5% Strike which is one of the game's extra secret rare cards. So, I don't know. This just seems like a Weiss Schwartz clone that's just going to pull from a bunch of different IPs. Maybe it works for them. Maybe it doesn't for others. I don't know how I feel about that. Even crossover stuff is like, I feel like it needs to be at least relevant or like similar enough that it works. Uh, but I don't know. We'll see how uh, stuff like this goes. We have White Schwartz, and I think this has been picking up steam. Uh, Bushy Road Inc. training card game launched in 2007. White Schwartz includes more than 10,000 unique cards that feature characters from Japanese pop culture, offering players the chance to relive climactic scenes from your favorite anime, manga, or video game titles once more on your stage. Many of the cards feature characteristics from Bushy Rose title, including Bang G Dream, Girls Band Party. The game's top cards include the iconic signature card, Ephemeral Existence, Mei Sakurajimi Jima from Bunny Girl Senpai, and Birdcage Diva Yukina Minato from Bang G Dream, Girls Band Party Volume 1. I like anime, but um, some of this is above my skill level, my, uh, my weeb level. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about just like pulling from a bunch of different IPs. Um, and I think a lot of people probably appreciate this more for the individual sets. Maybe. Not sure how the game plays. Not sure if it's any good. Um, but there's some crazy chase stuff as well. So I don't know. Uh, not for me, but. If that's, uh, if that's your thing, or if you like the certain animes that they collab with and you just want to get those, then by all means, do that. World of Warcraft was released in October 2006 by Upper Deck and issued from 2006 to 2010. When licensing went to Cryptozoic Entertainment, it was discontinued in 2013. The game is based on World of Warcraft online game, which is considered the greatest massive multiplayer online role-playing game of all time, with more than a million registered accounts. How many of those are the same people? Loot cards connect the game to the online game by providing players with a code that can be used to obtain special mounts for online avatars. The most sought-after cards are the loot cards with the top cards in that category being Spectral Tiger, Feldrake, and El Polo Grande. So, pretty interesting. Um, I like the fact that you could pull something where you can like redeem it for in-game stuff. Uh, I like gimmicky stuff like that, like the e-reader cards. Um, I wasn't into Pokemon at the time. Uh, I, I barely even knew what the e-reader was, even though I was playing video games. Um, but very interesting stuff. Cool when there's that, that interactability, uh, with games and 
video games and trading cards. Really wish they would do something with the, the amiibos for the Pokemon games inside the cards, like the amiibo cards, similar to like an Animal Crossing. I wouldn't be surprised if those get graded uh, eventually too, or are put on the list. So here we go. More games coming soon. Certification services for Yu-Gi-Oh! Trading Card game will be coming to CGC Trading Card soon. So I know um, they knew exactly what the question was going to be. Yu-Gi-Oh! Where is it? Being like a third place TCG, you would think that would be earlier on the list. Uh, so please stay tuned for an announcement related to that enhancement of service. A new holder size is required for Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. Oh, that makes sense. And supply chain issues have delayed production for a new holder. CGC trading cards will also be grading Nostalgics cards when the game is released. No idea what that is, but I guess I'll have to look it up. Already being hyped for outstanding card artwork, Nostalgics is scheduled to have a Kickstarter... Oh, Jesus, not another Kickstarter TCG... Launch before the end of 2021. Lucky Frog is expected to be a chase card. Of course it is. Game's not out yet. They're funding money for it, and there's already a chase card. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully that was insightful. Again, collect what you like. Grade what you want. If you want to grade stuff, do it. Don't. This is just my opinion. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm wrong sometimes. Uh, and however you enjoy the hobby, however you enjoy other hobbies, do it that way. Who cares what other people think? Have a good one.